Beneath a thousand meters of ocean, pressure climbs to 100 times what your body knows. Here, creatures lose all resemblance to surface life. Bodies turn to glass, organs drift in gelatin, and the world goes dark. This is where squids begin to look like beings from another planet, not by accident, but out of brutal necessity. Why does descending into the deep unlock transformations so strange that even scientists can barely explain them? The answer starts with the rules written by depth. Sunlight barely penetrates the uppermost layers of the ocean. In the first 200 meters, the epipelagic zone, enough light filters down to support drifting plankton and the silhouettes of fast-moving predators. Below this, the world dims rapidly. Between 200 and 1,000 meters stretches the mesopelagic, or twilight zone, a place where only the faintest blue light survives, stretched thin across endless water. Here, outlines blur and colors vanish, leaving only shadows and fleeting glimmers. At around 1,000 meters, the aphotic zone begins. This is the boundary where sunlight fails completely. Beyond this line, the ocean is a realm of permanent night. No dawn, no dusk, just blackness pressing in from every direction. The aphotic zone continues downward for thousands of meters, eventually reaching the abyssal plains and even deeper trenches, where pressure and darkness become absolute. These vertical layers are more than just lines on a map. Each marks a dramatic change in the rules of survival. As light fades, vision shifts from color and detail to the desperate search for movement or the faintest glint of bioluminescence. Above the aphotic line, animals can still rely on their eyes to find food or avoid predators. Below it, new strategies are required. The deep ocean's vertical gradient is a sliding scale of scarcity and danger, shaping every creature that crosses it. In these depths, squids and their neighbors are forced to adapt, their bodies and senses warped by the absence of light and the weight of water above. At depths where sunlight is only a memory, water pressure builds relentlessly, one atmosphere for every 10 meters descended. By 1,000 meters, the weight above equals 100 times what we feel at sea level. For most animals, that force would spell disaster. Air-filled cavities collapse, rigid shells crack, and even the molecules inside living cells begin to fail. Deep sea squids, especially the glass squids of the Cranchidae family, survive by abandoning solidity almost entirely. Their bodies are more than 90% water, with muscles stretched thin and a transparency that makes them nearly invisible. What looks like fragility is actually a masterstroke of engineering. Without gas bladders or heavy shells, these squids achieve neutral buoyancy, floating effortlessly in the mid-water gloom, becoming soft, where solidity would be fatal. Yet the real challenge goes deeper than body shape. High pressure disrupts the very chemistry of life, twisting proteins and stiffening membranes. To keep their cells working, deep-dwelling squids load their tissues with a molecule called trimethylamine N-oxide, TMAO. This compound acts as a chemical cushion, stabilizing proteins against the crushing force. Studies show that TMAO levels in squids rise steadily with depth, tracking the relentless increase in pressure. Without it, enzymes would unravel and cease to function. As marine ecologist Dr. Bruce Robison says, you cannot fight the pressure, but you can outsmart it. In the deep, survival means turning soft, staying supple, and letting chemistry do the heavy lifting, where bones and shells would only shatter. In the deep ocean, where sunlight fades to nothing, squids have developed some of the most extraordinary eyes in the animal kingdom. The giant squid, Architeuthis, is a legend in this world of darkness. Its eyes can reach up to 27 centimeters across, nearly the size of a basketball. These enormous orbs are not just for show. In the pitch black waters, every photon counts, and a larger eye collects more light, giving the squid a better chance to spot the faintest glimmer, a drifting prey item, or the distant glow of a predator disturbing bioluminescent plankton. Photons matter here, and size buys sensitivity. Optical models suggest that at these depths, even a few extra centimeters in eye diameter can mean the difference between seeing a threat at 30 meters or at 100 meters. For a giant squid, that margin can be life or death. But size is not the only solution. The cockeyed squid, Histioteuthis, takes a different approach. Instead of two matching eyes, it has one large tubular yellow eye pointing upward. 
and one small round blue eye aimed down. The larger eye scans the dim blue twilight above, tuned to catch silhouettes against the last traces of downwelling light. The smaller eye specializes in detecting flashes of bioluminescence below, where sunlight never reaches. This split design allows the squid to watch two worlds at once, one eye on the fading surface, the other on the glowing abyss. The asymmetric arrangement is an elegant compromise. Scientists continue to debate why giant squids invest so much in their massive eyes. Some argue these eyes are finely tuned to detect the bioluminescent trails left by hunting sperm whales, offering an early warning system in a world with few second chances. Others suggest the answer lies in the sheer size of the animal, where bigger bodies naturally require bigger eyes to maintain visual performance. What is clear, in the deep sea, vision is a high-stakes game of engineering. Every adaptation, whether it is the sheer scale of Architeuthis or the asymmetric gaze of Histiotuthis, is shaped by the relentless scarcity of light. Where photons are precious, evolution spends lavishly on the tools to find them. In the deep ocean's twilight, light is more than vision, it is survival. Bioluminescence, the ability to create living light, is a hallmark of deep sea squid. Their bodies are studded with photophores, tiny organs that mix chemicals to produce a cold blue or green glow. This living light serves four main purposes, each vital in the darkness. Camouflage comes first. Glass squids and firefly squid use counter-illumination, shining a gentle glow from their bellies to match the faint light above. This trick erases their silhouette, hiding them from predators watching from below. The match is so precise, even the sharpest eyes see only empty water. Next is the lure. Vampire squid and their kin dangle glowing arm tips or release bioluminescent clouds, imitating drifting plankton or the panic flashes of smaller prey. In a world where every meal counts, these lights draw in the curious and the hungry. The third function is the spotlight. Some deep-sea octopuses like Stauratuthis have suckers that glow, lighting up the water just enough to reveal or to confuse prey. Squids with clusters of photophores near their arms use them to briefly illuminate the darkness at the moment of attack. The fourth role is language. Species such as Abralia and Enoplotuthis display unique constellations of photophores, flashing in coded sequences to signal identity, readiness to mate, or warnings to rivals. In the deep, where sound and color vanish, light becomes the only way to communicate. Capturing these displays challenged researchers for decades. Dr. Edith Witter changed the game with Medusa, a camera system that waits silently in the dark, using a ring of blue light emitting diodes to mimic a jellyfish's distress. In 2012, Medusa's lure drew a giant squid into view, capturing its living light on film for the first time. Food is scarce in the deep ocean, forcing squids to become masters of efficiency and endurance in extreme scarcity. The vampire squid, Vampirotuthis infernalis, has taken this challenge to an extreme. Instead of chasing prey, it extends two long, sticky filaments to snare marine snow, a constant drizzle of organic particles and detritus falling from above. Each filament gathers tiny fragments, which the squid reels in and eats, conserving precious energy. This detritivore approach is rare among cephalopods, but it is perfectly suited to a world where every calorie counts. Some squids risk vertical migrations to feed higher up, but the vampire squid strategy lets it remain in the deep with minimal effort and a far better chance of survival. Every feature that seems eerie or unnatural in deep sea squids is the product of hard choices. Oversized eyes gather precious light, but they demand extra energy. Transparent bodies hide them from predators, yet they make them fragile and easily destroyed by nets. Bioluminescent displays help them hunt and communicate, but they also risk exposing the squid to unseen threats. These are not mistakes, they are solutions, each tuned to the physics of pressure, darkness, and hunger. As research moves away from destructive trawling towards silent cameras and genetic sampling, the goal is to understand without harm. The deeper we look, the more these adaptations reveal a logic shaped by survival, not by our sense of the uncanny. Every dive into the deep ocean reveals that life will twist itself into almost any form to survive. As technology pushes us further down, these strange adaptations become warnings and inspiration, 
Reminders that our planet still hides realities we can barely imagine. What would you explore next?